are supposed to be cute. And I guess that's why they make the perfect star for a Halloween-worthy legend. of Boring History. My name is Angela and today to continue the theme of scary Halloween stories we're going to be hearing the legend of the Bunny Man. The tale of the Bunny Man is a legend that originated in the 1970s in North Virginia and apparently this story started off as an urban legend that teenagers used to tell each other during sleepovers and lunch breaks at school and the story that they told went a little something like this. In the early 1900s, deep in the dark depths of the forest that divided this town called Clifton and this station called Fairfax Station, which was like a railway station. Actually, maybe it still is. Have you been to North Virginia? Have you been to Clifton? Let me know if Fairfax Station still exists. I think that it does. But anyway, we're getting off topic. In the deep, dark depths of this forest, there was an asylum for the insane. Now, if we know anything about historical insane asylums, or even if you just enjoy the odd horror movie, we know that in the olden days, these asylums were not very nice places to be. And so perhaps it comes as no surprise that the authorities had decided to shut down this asylum. And I guess having an asylum in the middle of a forest can't have been very practical either. So they gather up all the residents, load them on the bus and intend to take them to Lawton Prison. Asylum, prison, I guess they both have cells, they can both be locked up. So all the residents are gathered up onto the bus and on the way to the prison, the bus crashes. But it's okay, because they managed to round up all the residents that try to take advantage of this little transportation issue and secure their freedom. All except for one man, Douglas Griffin. The authorities search high and low all through the night and all through the next day and possibly another night. They searched for weeks and they knew they had to be hot on Douglas Griffin's heels because as they were searching through the forest, they started finding half eaten and half gutted bunny rabbits. And the more they kept searching, the more they kept finding these mutilated little bunnies. And the most horrifying discovery of all was when they came to Fairfax Station Bridge and they found little bunnies with their bellies sliced open, hanging. Actually, do you know what? It must have been a real train station at one point because I remember one of the articles I was reading about the bunny man had an actual photo of that bridge. Minus the mutilated bunnies, of course. But anyway, the search continues for months and apart from the occasional bunny hopping, I mean hopping up, Douglas Griffin was never seen or heard of again. And do you know what? At first the authorities were okay with that. If the guy wants to live in the forest, eat some bunnies, well, I guess there are worse things he could do, but they should have been careful for what they wished for. Because when Halloween came around, they found something much, much worse left hanging from that bridge. A group of teenagers had decided that what was now known as the Bunny Bridge would make a suitable location for their Halloween celebration. And the next morning, well, this group of teenagers was found hanging from the bridge each of them gutted like one of the little bunny rabbits. And ever since that night, it's been said that if you too happen to dawdle along Bunny Man Bridge at midnight on Halloween, then you will also take on the form of some rather morbid, yet strikingly realistic Halloween decorations. Now, apparently there are some historical inaccuracies when it comes to this story. Go figure. For example, there are no records of a David Griffin ever having been at an insane asylum in that area, and the prison that the residents were apparently being transported to, well, it didn't open up until 1916, which means it was hard that a group of residents could have been transported to the prison in the very early 1900s. Oh, and there was never an insane asylum in the middle of the forest. But the real origin of the story may be even more terrifying. One fine October night in the 1970s, a man by the name of Robert Bennett was spending some quality time with his fiancée in his car that happened to be parked near the bridge of Fairfax Station. Now the two of them were just chilling, chatting about their dreams and aspirations, possibly even about floral arrangements for the upcoming wedding. You know, just 
normal things that you do when sitting in a car parked at a bridge. When suddenly, just as they were reaching the peak of their floral arrangement discussion, a man dressed in a white bunny suit appeared at the window. And he was shouting at them, screaming, get off my land, this is private property. I've written down your number plate and I'm calling the police. And then, just to prove his point, I guess, he threw a, a wooden handled ax thing right at Robert Bennett's car windscreen. Luckily, neither Robert nor his fiance were hurt. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that maybe this guy in the bunny costume was just some random who'd had a few too many happy drinks at an early Halloween celebration. But then two weeks later, he's spotted again by this security guard called Paul Phillips. The bunny man was just sitting on the porch of an old abandoned house, stroking an ax. Now Paul was a good security guard, so he tells this strange man that he's trespassing. This causes the bunny man to become furious and he starts swinging his axe all over the place screaming that it's not him that's trespassing, but everybody else. And he challenges Paul to come closer so he can crack his head open with his axe. Now of course Paul does the smart thing and he just slowly backs away. After all, this isn't a horror movie, it's real life. But when the police eventually turn up, there's no bunny man to be seen. So, who was this So. Who was this strange man in a bunny costume? I guess we'll never know. Have you heard of this legend? Have you seen the bunny man? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for joining me in this Halloween worthy urban legend. I hope you'll consider subscribing and I look forward to sharing even more boring history with you in the future.